Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tennille and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sean. I'm Tennille. And today we are looking at Adventures of Sinbad the Sailor, or Thousand and One Arabian Nights. It goes by both names. Tales of a Thousand and One Nights. Yeah. Is a more better translation. Again, it goes by any of those titles because it's the same general premise, but it, it's they do whatever they want. Yeah, it's inspired from the <laughs> A Thousand and One Nights tales. But this one is from Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And it's a mix of stop motion and paper craft, which is very interesting. Mm hmm. Really cool. I mean, obviously, uh, due to, you know, what we've already seen in Animation Pilgrimage. I can only compare it to, like, both Ahmed and past uh, uh, Yiji Trenka films. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, a marriage between the two. But uh, Yiji Trenka is not involved in this film at all, actually. Different studio? Uh-huh, different director. Uh, the director is Carl Zeman. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Okay. But he was a famous director for films that he actually made before this, uh, which were both live action animation hybrids. And he would use animation and like special effects to create these really interesting, really unique uh, fantasy worlds. Okay. He made some movies based off of Journey to the Center of the Earth, and a whole bunch of other things, but that was the one I was familiar with, reading his biography. Um, and from what I could tell, it seemed like he was a pretty influential director of his time. Uh, most of the movies he made were more so in the 50s and 60s, but then he went on to do more animated stuff later on in his life, like this. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's neat. Um, overall, I'd say this is a pretty charming movie yeah just really charming enjoyable i wasn't bored watching it at any point no and that's saying something because it's an hour and a half long and it's incredibly segmented mm -hmm. there's been a uh, a lot of films that we've seen that some of them like just can barely even hold your attention for an hour mm -hmm. and it's like that's pushing it and this was one that did not feel like it was slow paced. It's very episodic. Yes. It's like, all right, we're going to do this story. And then it kind of fades out and then it fades back in and we do the next story. And then we do the next story. And there's like, I don't know, so many stories in this one. I think it's seven. Okay. Seven total short stories, all about 11 to 13 minutes long. Mm hmm And... Um, this was actually a package film. I'm not surprised. Because all of the short stories were done over a certain period of time. They would air, and then when they were all finished, it got released as a full movie. We'll be seeing a lot of this kind of... Package uh, film Yeah, stuff. package film process here in the next few years. I would say for the rest of the 70s and probably early 80s, this will become a pretty popular... Medium. Yeah, where you release it in parts to TV and then release it all together as a full package. Cool. Cool, I guess. <laughs> you don't like this? I don't know, man. Like, it, it's definitely different from, like, just making a one-and-done show or, like, movie. Oh, yeah, it very much so is. It means that you don't really have... Uh, the big problem with something like this is you don't necessarily get that same satisfaction when you reach the end of the story because the, the whole time it hasn't been building up to this grand climax. Mm -hmm. You know, these are stories that are all very, you could replace one element or the other, it doesn't matter. They all have their own mini climaxes and then that's over. We're moving on to something else. Yep. This one does have at least a little bit of follow through in that what happened to Sinbad last on, like, last time. Mm-hmm. 
usually carries over to the beginning of where he's at now. Whether he's out on the ocean, which typically that's how it starts, is he's somewhere mm -hmm. out in the ocean because hijinks ensued at the end of the last one, so he's back out at sea. Yeah. I guess I tried to write, like, a, a story synopsis, and then I'm like, you know, I... I I honestly don't you remember the specifics of anything, and I'm going to butcher this horribly. You would have had to write the specifics for each episode, and yeah, that's quite but, a few to remember. Yeah, so essentially Sinbad goes out on a boat, something happens, he generally ends up in a new area, mm -hmm. very often he runs into a sultan who has a princess, and he hits on the princess, and the sultan doesn't like it, yada yada yada, at one point he gets a carpet, at one point he interacts with the genie in a bottle, at one point he has an old man riding him around and won't let him be, uh, one time he's like taken over by monkeys, who are like just parading him around and having fun with him. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Like one time he gets a bag that's uh, full of gold that just never stops spewing out and it makes the entire island collapse into the ocean. Right. Because there's too much gold. It's just all over the place. The final one, he ends up marrying a princess by doing the whole, you know, I'm a prince. And even though he's definitely not using mm -hmm. the power of the genie and but uh, she doesn't really care that he's a prince. She just loves him for being the simple man that he is. So they build a nice little shack on the side of the ocean. He becomes a fisherman, and they live happily ever after, and the story ends. Yeah. I, it's a very simple um, and charming. I, the biggest reason I believe to watch this film is because of the art direction and the sheer craftsmanship yes. of the paper craft and the puppet models yeah, that it's, are used. It's interesting how the characters work because all the characters are made of paper craft except their head is like a wooden molded thing. Mm -hmm. And so the head can tilt in many different directions, but the body is almost exclusively flat. I'm... I'd be really curious to see how exactly mm -hmm. this was shot because papercraft, while I've never done papercraft before, I can only assume you have like a flat table and like you're pointing the camera down onto the paper crafts as you move them piece by piece. Mm -hmm. But then with that like 3D head, you know, you've got that actual physical round shape with the head. Like, how, how are they filming that? What tricks are they using? Yeah, and then and then Sinbad specifically has, like, I don't even know how many different heads or facial expressions. expressions. He's very expressive. His mustache moves. His mouth moves. His eyes move. His eyebrows move. And those are all painted on. Yeah. So it's like... How did you guys do this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you just have a whole bunch of different heads that you kept swapping out? But the heads all look identical, like the grain on it and stuff. So right, I'm really confused. Or is it just like painted cells that have his face on it, and you switch out this the cells? I think that'd be really weird and complicated. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they did it. I I don't either. And like he, there's this great detail on his face where. It's even the though it's a, nose. even though it's a 3D object that is his face, uh, it still looks flat. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a line down the center of his nose, so that when he's partially turned, he's got an outline on the nose. Right. It's fantastically done. Yeah, it, it was one of those things. Like when we were first watching it, I wasn't sure if it was like a, a physical object or not, or mm -hmm. if it was just like another piece of paper like <clears throat> it took me a little bit to figure out just really interesting the art direction in this film besides the puppetry is also really good like the sets are beautiful the color palette's really good I love the uh, Arabic calligraphy yes like design of like the clouds and stuff it's it's really beautiful. I would highly recommend checking this one out. Yes, me too. I would absolutely say people check it out, give it a try. It also has a really interesting way that it tells its story in that it's all narrated by Sinbad mm -hmm. and hard, like there's... No talking. The, yeah, there's no dialogue. It's all narration. 
But the narrator's, um, like, just very interesting to listen to. The narration doesn't get dull. Mm -hmm. He comes in when he needs to. And this movie was interesting enough with all of its ideas. Like, I was almost, like, mostly on the edge of my seat watching the whole time. It's not, like, thrilling or anything, but you're just like, oh, wow. You've got my attention. Cool, yeah. So anyway, all of these shorts were released in the time span over... Uh, 1971 to 1974. Okay. So honestly, like, for getting all of these done in, like, four years, pretty good, I would say. Especially with the amount of time paper craft takes to make. Indeed. Yeah. Fantastically done. Mm-hmm. Really interesting film. I, I highly recommend this one. And that will wrap up. 1974. 1974. Oh my god! So, that means that next episode we will be doing another Lizard and Cat Award show. We'll be talking about 1973 and 1974. So, all of those movies together. We'll be going over what we thought was good, what we thought was bad. We'll be dividing things up, say what's got all the information, the tidbits, the nitpicks. <laughs> all, all the that. stuff. And I also want to say that uh, thank you guys so much for enjoying Animation Pilgrimage. Sean and I have started working on uh, finishing up 19, the 1970s. We For a while, we didn't have 1979 done in our document. You can find our document of all the movies that we're going to watch down below in the description, as always. Mm -hmm. We've started filling in for 79, 79 and 80. And 80. Uh, and... Uh, over the next few weeks, we're hoping to start getting more 80s on there, but we don't like to go too far ahead because it's the internet, and if you find a link uh, now, by the it time... It might we'll... not be there in a few months. Yeah, yeah, it might not be there in a few months to a year when we finally get to the 80s. Right. So it's it's a give and take of if how far ahead we want to get. Mm -hmm. But we're... those are going to be on there, so if you want to help us try to find movies that we didn't find... Please feel free to look for any movie listed in blue anywhere on this list. Uh -huh. Either we've passed it already or it's coming up. If you can find it or you can translate it because it's a movie from your language and you really feel like going that extra mile and translating it for us, we would highly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And you can send us the link to that uh, to our email address, which is animationpilgrimage.com at gmail.com. Yeah. Very straightforward. It's also linked in the description of this video, as is it uh, every Animation Pilgrimage episode. Mm -hmm. We also are getting to the point where I don't think um, the, the next set... The next... Yeah. So the next two years we'll be doing together again. So like we'll this. be doing 75 and 76 together before we have another award show. Mm -hmm. But... Things are going to be changing up pretty soon where we're only going to be doing one year at a time. Because there's minimum 10 movies per year after that, and that's too many movies to do more than one year at a time. Well, I think it just makes sense to eventually do one year an at a award time show after every year of animation, yeah. you know? Like, we're finally getting to that point. Early on, we did like a decade because there weren't a whole lot of movies. Mm-hmm. But now we're getting to the point where it's like, oh, 30 movies came out in one year. Mm -hmm. Sure, we only found maybe a third of them, but if we find others, that's too many movies to put into a category with another year. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it would be fun spitballing an idea at you here. Okay. Is that then when we do reach the end of the decade, we can bring back... End, the end of the decade wrap up and oh. we can just talk about you know like what some of our favorites were from absolute the decade. bests yeah. of the decade yeah that's not a bad idea because we are starting to have to break it apart mm -hmm. i think that would be a good idea especially starting here with the 70s mm -hmm. so look forward to that yeah we'll see you guys next time for our thoughts on all of the films we've seen from 1973 and 1974. Yeah, see you guys then. Bye-bye.